You know, all it takes is a reasonably good map to figure out what's going on. So, let's start not from the start, but right after 9-11. And we'll put aside all the different uh, views of 9-11, just because that would take too long to get into right now. But after 9-11, they bombed and invaded Afghanistan. Well, where is Afghanistan? It's right next to Iran on the right over here. Then they bombed and invaded Iraq and put boots on the ground there. And by that time, there was a great, um, I don't know, a drastic sort of opposition really to war within the United States. The people of the United States have become very unhappy really about these wars, you know, in some ways more so than in other countries who had been more unhappy at first. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong, I'm living in the United States and it is like a fishbowl, but anyway. So, then they started to run out of troops to put on the ground and at the same time they had to deal with this sort of, um, you know, dissent and, you know, boiling up to the mainstream so they found this guy who was a great salesman, a man supposedly of the left who really wasn't of the left at all. A man who gets the Nobel Peace Prize, you know, but yet continues on with the twin occupations of Afghanistan and Iraq, despite this idea that they're going to withdraw troops, whatever. And, and they might withdraw some troops, but there's mercenaries there and they're really not leaving Iraq or Afghanistan and anyone who thinks that they are just yeah I can't help you so then they have to have this big PR campaign and what do they do they get a Obama and if it was someone else if it was McCain that won he wouldn't have been able to get away with the stuff Obama is getting away with there's no way so they find proxy armies and they go into over here on the side, Libya. Let's go over there, see Libya. And they arm them. And they fund them. And then they get them to ask for help so they can send their NATO in. And they get a resolution, oddly enough, that the Russians abstain from and the Chinese abstain from. Probably because the current president of Russia is too, you know, too cozy maybe with the, the West. Too trusting of the West, who something along those lines, you know. Putin was never very happy about Libya, and you can go find videos over on Russia Today and see just how unhappy he was about, you know, what they did in Libya. And they make a mess of Libya and call it a success, just like they've made a mess of Iraq and try to pretend like they had some kind of success. Maybe the idea is to make chaos and a mess everywhere. You know, just to prevent, I, I think that for China and, and even Russia to rise, they need calm, and the United States doesn't want to give them calm, they want to keep constant chaos, and I, you know, in, in that region. So, and part of it was because we had this revolution that was, um, you know, a legitimate revolution that was being sort of um, managed by the U.S. and Egypt, and Egypt is right next door to Libya, so part of it's to menace Egypt, of course, to you know have a place uh, in Libya where they can have their Africom. If you've noticed, both Libya and Egypt are actually part of Africa, <laughs> really. So they're going into Africa and chasing China out of Africa and getting the natural resources. But they have to do it through proxy armies now because they don't have any ground troops. And it continues to continue. So what happens now? Unrest in Syria. You can see Syria there. Just going to move in and get some Syria. There it's, uh, it's, there's Syria. And um, the latest development is that um, the Russians have decided that they're going to send warships to Syria. So let's think about that. The I guess... Libya wasn't a red line, wasn't a, 
but but Syria is Syria is the where you draw the line, I guess. And I guess the Russians have a naval base in Syria. I'm told. I don't know the nature of it, and I don't know why they'd have to send ships from far away if they have a naval base in Syria. You have Turkey up there, and it's sort of in the middle, seemingly on the NATO, part of NATO, seemingly on the west side, but at times looking as though they're playing both sides. And then, of course, you have Israel, which is a whole nother discussion. <laughs> and Lebanon too and we have the quote from Wesley Clark where they wanted to you know take down I think seven or eight countries within five years they're way off schedule I think but anyway all of these countries except for I think Egypt I'm not sure about Egypt all of these countries Libya was on the list Syria was on the list Iran I think was on the list and so they have a plan, but their plan is out of desperation. Their plan is because their empire is collapsing all around them. And that's the part that they just can't seem to understand. Well, they understand it, but they don't like it. So, to in summation, I guess, the reason uh, that they're doing all these things and the map looks like it does, and that all this is happening now, is because look at the West. They're in such turmoil and they have unrest in their societies and their whole system is collapsing around them. Some say it's on purpose, it's planned. I don't know, maybe. It's hard to say what, you know, who knows what these, these sort of, you know, super rich elite why they do the things they do. It seems to be senseless. They've caused nothing but chaos in Libya. But maybe that's what they wanted. But the point is their empire is collapsing. They're trying to save this collapsing empire and it's just it's it's a it's irreversible at this point I think and people talk about the rise of China, that's true, but there's also Russia that is um reasserting its superpower status in, in a way and there you go there's your map